Hello, everyone. This is Fritz Murphy, the host of God Grief Today, uh, Community. And today on my show, I have Rose. Rose, go ahead and say hi. Hey. And Rose is a friend of Abby Vanderlaan's, and that's how she heard about the show. So we are both just big Abby Vanderlaan fans. Um, and we're going to hear a little bit about Rose's story today. So Rose, go ahead and tell us a little bit about your story. Yeah, totally. Um, obviously, my name is Rose. I, um, at, for as long as I can remember, um, loss has always been a part of my family, whether it's like great grandparents, uh, grandpa, family, friends, and such. Um, my eighth grade year of like middle school, uh, my grandpa gets got diagnosed with cancer on cr- that Christmas Eve of 2016. Oh my and then, God. um, so he was going through treatments and he was in and out of the hospital. And then, um, unexpectedly on March 6th of 2017, uh, my dad passed away unexpectedly, like out of oh the blue, gosh. um, that night. I just, I remember that night cause my, uh, grandpa was in the hospital and he got out, he got like a, just emergency discharge to say his final goodbye. So, uh, losing my dad unexpectedly. And then 55 days later, my grandpa passes away of his complications of his cancer. And, um, and like at that point, like in my faith journey, I was like going through confirmation, um, like learning, like diving in deep about like learning more like behind the Bible and like learning about like the church and stuff. And, Um, I I just remember so vividly. I'm like, after I get confirmed, I'm out of here. Never seeing me again. Like, uh, no, why? Like, like, why do I, why would God put someone or like even a family through this much suffering and pain? And, uh, like, uh, I went to camp. I went to like a national youth gathering and, uh, there's someone, there was a speaker that I love dearly. Her message to everyone, her name's Nadia Bolt Weber. I don't know if you know her, or like heard of her, Fritz, but uh, she is, um, she talked about like how she was suffering through depression and anxiety and kind of tying all that into like her faith journey and how like she got discriminated for being a pastor with tattoos and, mm. um, like things like that. And that kind of helped me get out of like uh, a little like faith block, I guess you could say. And then yeah. going to camp as a camper, I um, like the last night, last full, like the last full day that night, they have like a reflection service. Mm. And it's like a time where you can just like reflect on the week, be in prayer. Um, and like when I was like praying, I could just like, I could, this is, I probably, I don't know if this was, but I felt, I felt it like there was like a hand in it, but like my dad's hand on my shoulder. And at mm. this point it would, would have been a little bit, bit over a year since my dad passed away. And like, wow. I felt his hand and I heard him like, Oh, Rosie, I love you so much. Stay strong. And I'm oh, like, my goodness. obviously I just started bawling in like the yeah. sanctuary and my older, my cousin, who was the same age as me, um, went to camp that week too. And after that, we did a labyrinth. So essentially what it was, I don't know if you know what a labyrinth is. I think maybe my college used to do them, but go ahead and explain it because I can't remember what, the, I never went to one, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. So essentially what it is, it's like a big, it's like, it's kind of like a, I mean, it's flat, but it's like a big kind of maze type deal. And uh, like when you when you walk through it, you're like re- like re- you're in like reflection and prayer. And actually on my MacBook, our church uh, uh, that I go to at, at, at college uh, for Lent, she has she got us all like labyrinth stickers. So whenever you're feeling stressed out or like all the things you can just do it real quick and calm down. But yeah. um, during that whole time I could like hear my dad and my grandpa like talking to me. It's been 
a few years since that happened, but like essentially it was like talking about like they were like I felt like they were talking to me about um how like it, obviously it's different, but like just sit talking about how proud I they are of me and things like that. Oh, wow. And then working on I went back to camp the next year as a CA as a counselor in training. And then this past summer, I uh, was a I was a I was a counselor on staff, and just seeing God's work and like His how God is able to heal people and like um, just show people His light and His love. Um, I think that I was like reflecting over it over all this, and how um, I I felt like. I felt like a blind person for a while because I blocked myself off from seeing God's love and grace and um, like his work. And then one day he just kind of like, like how Jesus heal, healed the blind man, just opened up my eyes and yeah. seeing his work. Oh, that is wonderful. Wow. Um, so what has been helpful in your journey of healing? Um, I would have to say like the people, um, that reach out or that are like even just there, um, like, I mean, not, not necessarily like the people that you're close with that are reaching out and, um, saying it's okay. It's okay to cry. It's okay to not be okay. Um, just know that, like, I'm always here to, like, to listen, and, like, I feel like that's just one big thing that I've learned within these last five years. Yeah. Wow. That is wonderful. Uh, let's see. What has been unhelpful in your journey of healing? So... I remember, I remember this so vividly. I had a, I had a classmate in high school and a few years prior, she lost her dad unexpectedly. And um, when she, when she found like, when we connected, like after my dad passed away, she's like, I know exactly what you're going through. <laughs> I was like, do you, do you really? <laughs> Because yeah. well, like, grief looks so different for everyone. Yes. I was I talking 100% to, agree. Yes. I was talking to my mom yesterday about, um, about like, loss. Because she, she's not only, like, one of the strongest people I know, but, like, she's gone. I say she's gone through hell and back. Right. Because when she, she was, she was in uh, 15 when she lost her mom to breast cancer. Wow. So I never got to meet my grandmother. And then yeah. uh, in 2006, she lost her. So my grandpa on my mom's side uh, passed away of kidney failure and she was a widow before she was 40. Essentially. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. And, and like, so she's like this, she's like my sister. We talk about everything. Yeah. Um, and like it just grief is just so different from everyone like compared to my brothers i have an older brother and younger brother um we all we everyone just takes all this grief differently like like yeah. it's just yeah <laughs> yeah that's fair i i 100% agree i think that even if you lost it's it's just not the same like who you lost was not the same person they lost it's just I agree I think that's one of the wrong things to say is I know exactly what you're going through let's see yes and yeah and then also sorry I'm gonna add a little bit to that oh you're fine keep going um so I was talking to my mom about it and when she recently said this, I was like, oh, I mean, that kind of makes sense. People, like, I understand, like, when people 
when someone loses someone very important to them, the, the first thing that they say is like, I'm so sorry. It's like, what do you have to be sorry for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the more that I like see, like pe- I see people in my uh, congregation in my hometown, they're, uh, my home congregation is, a, I, I like to, uh, they're more of a dying church. There are some young families, but most of them are older. Um, and uh, I see more members pass away. And I'm like, I I sympathize. I say that instead of, I, I'm sorry for your loss. I say, I, I, I sympathize instead of that. Because I know that that's, that's something interesting. that I, I don't want to say to people because First thing, really, I come up to like, why are why are you sorry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair, huh? Yeah, I haven't heard that one before. I like it. Alrighty, well, my next question is: Do you have any suggestions for folks who want to help their friends who have undergone traumatic experiences, or for people of the church who want to help their members who are undergoing difficult circumstances? Yeah. Um, for like someone who wants to help their friends going through a traumatic experience, um, I'd say just have, just be open ears. I mean, you don't necessarily even need to say anything. You can just be like, if you need someone to vent to or even talk to, just <laughs> I'm all ears. Cause I feel like yeah. that's what I, I have been that person for a few friends of mine. Um, and just, um, I feel like that's just important to be like, I'm all ears first off. And like, if they have any, like, if they need any, not necessarily like need anything, but like if they need a hug or they need like food, because uh, most definitely, like depression and, and anxiety gets the best of all of us. Sometimes it just sneaks mm-hmm. up on us and just says, "Well, he's in here." <laughs> <laughs> and um, just having that, like, a safe person to be able to go to, mm-hmm. is really important. And I'd have to say, for like people of the church, um even though people don't vocalize that they need prayers, just, I I feel like it's important to pray for everyone, even if they're believers and unbelievers, because, um, like whether no, no matter like what type of religion you lie under, or if you don't believe at all, it's important that we love thy neighbor. We love everyone, no matter of like the race, sexuality, uh, religion, just like anything, you're supposed to be able to love everyone unconditionally, yeah. which is obviously hard, right? It, 110%. But um, I feel like praying for people is important. I agree. That is really, really wise. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What has been the most helpful thing you've done for yourself in your journey of healing? Oh boy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Um, I, I would have to say, uh, like finding one thing that you can honor yourself, but also honor a loved one. Like, when it's nice out, at least to say, or my my older my brothers they go ice fishing, but I like to go fishing in the summer. Or yeah, I like to just sit out and like on a bench and just look up and look around. At, even at camp, uh, Sh- I uh, Chautauqua Lutheran Ministries I love over there so much. They have a beautiful. Like the scenery is just beautiful. There's a whole bunch of trees looking out the lake. And it's, the. I feel like one of the best parts is that it doesn't have any service. So it's kind of hard to communicate with people. But I feel like that's one way to unplug from everything. Yes. And um, I like 
for example, when I was younger, my mom taught me how to crochet. And that has been one thing, even like last semester of um, like college. And even now, that's one thing I see myself doing. Uh, it turns out that my grandma on my mom's side, um, the uh, she taught my mom how to crochet. And it's just been a family line of uh, women in my mom's side that learned how to crochet from like their mothers. Yeah. So it's, that's, it, I feel like it's just the little things to, to look at and being like, take a deep breath and take a look. Yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Do you have any advice or something you'd like to say for people going through terrible things? Um, I know this is kind of like everyone typically says it, but like you're not alone on what you're going through. Yeah. Um, and like I said before, like everyone goes through things differently or some people go through the same things, but take it indifferently. Um, if you have like a family member or a friend or a pastor that you can like, you, that you feel comfortable with talking with, I feel like that that's important. Or even if you need to go talk to a doctor or a therapist, that's always a good thing because just keeping it bottled in for so long, it does more damage than you think it's helpful. Yes. I yes. have learned that the hard way. <laughs> Sometimes I just keep on, like, I keep things bottled up so much. And then people, they're like, can I talk with you? And I'm like, yes, you can totally talk to me. And then I end up, like, bursting and, like, crying. Mm -hmm. and they're like, wait, are you okay? And I'm like, I'm fine, not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But um, that's one thing that I've been trying to do better for myself is trying to not bottle things in that's yes. even if that's like if you feel like you need to like yell at god do do what you have to do and not keep your emotions all bottled up amen i 100 percent relate to that i think uh I think I used to be an expert at bottling things up, but now I just chat all the time to everyone <laughs> about everything. And I think I'm a much happier person for it. So I think yes. that's good advice. Yes, mm. yes. All righty. And then my last question is, do you have any stories about how God worked through your suffering? I, I think it's... Uh, it's, I think it's amazing how you put together this podcast because this is definitely an easy outreach outreach for people to um, talk about like hard loss things. and like hard things that people go through in life. And well, thank you. It's it's important for people to know that um, grief isn't just a one time deal. It. I read something on Facebook. I actually shared it recently and I thought it was, it's very, very important because it talks about how, um, oh my goodness, I need to find it real quick. Let's just, ah, found it. <laughs> so it's John Tesh. I don't know who he is. I just saw one of my family friends share it, but it says, or he said, uh, grief is like carrying a stone in your pocket. And I've been, after I read that, I was like pondering about it and how sometimes grief is like a tiny little pebble that you can't feel that's in your pocket. And other times it's a humongous like boulder and poking you in like in, in your, in your thigh, in your pocket and it's prominent, but it never leaves you no matter where you go. Um, and it's not about how people get over loss. It's about how people live with it. Um, Amen. I, I was talking with my mom about, I think it was yesterday, or maybe it was some 
later, like later on, I, I don't know for sure off the top of my head, but we were talking about how she was talking with someone and uh, he was like, you should move on from Joel. And I'm, and my mom's like, wow. like, um, excuse me, you don't know if I moved on from him or not. Uh, bold of you to assume, but it's just not necessarily moving on. But I mean, yes, moving on is good, but also remembering your past is important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe moving forward is a better word. Like yes. you don't get over it, but you move, you move forward with it. And I'm like, he, he could have worded it much better, but he, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and like, I feel like it's important and like, I, I feel like it's important that people know that God puts people in certain situations and, um, to be able to tell, to show that he loves us no matter what and how, um, I've been like reflecting over this over the past few years. And I'm like, I think the reason why God decided to um put through our family through this much suffering is to show that with through suffering comes beauty mm. through like through the storms here there comes a, a sunshine and rainbow like a rainbow yeah. like seeing like it it will get better but sometimes you just need to go through those hard hard rapids and pointy rocks in order to get there yeah yeah that's beautiful thank you yeah and like I feel like that's important to for people to know that um if they're going through anything hard right now that not only it will get better but God kind of puts people in certain situations for a reason and that's the one thing I've been struggling like not recently, but like in my past, like struggling with like, why, 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 why did he do this? Why did he put me through so much suffering? Why did he put my family through so much suffering? Why did he put through like family friends? And yeah. 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 Hard questions to answer. Well, that was my last question. Rose, thank you so much for being on my show and sharing your story with us. I um, I just always appreciate people who are brave enough to talk about these things publicly. And I think it does help a lot of people if, you know, when they're going through things, just to know that they're not alone. So thank you. Well, thank you, Fred, so much. <laughs> All righty. Well, folks, we will see you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.